أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين. Today we are going to learn about the Battle of Muta. This is the final major incident before the grand finale of the conquest of Mecca. The Battle of Muta was fought in 8 AH between Muslims and the Byzantine Empire and the Arab Christian vassals. Muta is the name of a small village situated in an area that used to be in the Roman province. Currently, it is in Jordan. Relations between the Muslims and the Romans were tense, for the Romans together with their Arab allies used to enrage and provoke the Muslims by any means. In particular, when the Prophet ﷺ sent an envoy, Al-Harith, with a letter to invite the Emperor Heraclius to the Islam, the Muslim ambassador had to pass the Ghassan tribe in Syria. The Ghassan had an affinity with the Romans because they were the Christians and the Arab vassals. Out of their rage, the Ghassan captured the envoy and took him to their chief, Shurahbil ibn Amr, who not only mocked him but tortured him to death. Upon learning of the atrocity, the Prophet ﷺ wanted the justice to be provided to him so the message had to be conveyed to the world that the ambassador of rising nation of Muslims could not be killed and ignored. In Jamad al-Awwal 8AH, the Prophet ﷺ announced and called upon the Muslims to join the army and march north to Ghassan. 3,000 soldiers joined the force. This was the only time when he وسلم, appointed three leaders who would succeed one another in the battle. Should any of them fall in succession? Prophet وسلم, did not join the soldiers and stayed in Medina to attend the pressing matters. So he appointed Zayd ibn Haritha an, first in command. Second was Ja'far ibn Abu Talib an, and the third was Abdullah ibn Rawaha an. The group became known as the Army of Leaders. All three were incredibly near and dear to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ forbade the army to break their promises and prohibited them from killing the children, women, elderly or monks worshipping in seclusion. He ﷺ gave them a white flag and accompanied the army all the way to the standard place where every group would bid farewell to their travelers. It's called the Hill of Farewell. Although the Muslim army tried to march swiftly to preserve the element of the surprise, but news traveled fast. The tribe of Ghassan raised a very large force of allies and were soon joined by a contingent of Roman soldiers. The opposition forces outnumbered the Muslim warriors by approximately a factor of three to one. When the Muslims reached Jordan, they learned about the size of the opposition forces. They were also not expecting the tribe of Ghassan to come with the Roman soldiers who had superior weapons, also were well trained and possessed strong horses. These new developments caused the brave men to contemplate the situation over two nights. Zayd ibn Haritha an, asked ibn Rawaha an, what should be done. Ibn Rawaha an, spoke to the army and raised their morals by mentioning the rewards of martyrdom in the battle. The words of Ibn Rawaha an, energized the army and they continued their march. After traveling for one month, they finally reached the village of Mu'ta. They positioned the army close to a river for easy access to water. The battle begins. As the army of Romans arrived with a huge number of warriors, Zayd ibn Haritha an, took the charge and held the flag with honor. He attacked the enemies from every side until he was surrounded by them and martyred. Jafar an, quickly stepped in as commander. The bravery of Jafar an, at Muta is almost unparalleled with any companion in any battle. He was single-handedly fighting the people around him who were stabbing him from all directions until a Roman soldier killed him. 
and Ja'far was martyred. And now it was Ibn Rawaha who took the flag, and he went into battle and died as a brave martyr. Evening arrived and three appointed leaders of the Muslims were gone. Thabit ibn Arqam jumped in, got the flag and took refuge in a small area. The battle was non-stop. But he shouted out, O Muslims, come to me. Sahabas noticed that he had the flag in hands, so it was clear they were all dead. Ibn Arqam asked the group to quickly choose a leader amongst them. So they looked around and their eyes turned to Khalid ibn al-Walid. He was well known far and wide as a military genius. Khalid was quite aware of the number of the Muslim army. He thought of a strategy to lead them in a different manner. What appears to be the case is that Khalid realized that there was no way to achieve actual victory. The only real victory would be to preserve the Muslim army from destruction. So he had a two-pronged tactic. The first was that he organized the army for a quick short-term attack. Another thing he did was that he strategically positioned the archers so that it stopped the Romans from advancing forward. The next morning, he reassembled the army. He had the right and the left flank swap the positions. He also instructed the front forces and the rear forces to switch as well. Lastly, a group of soldiers were to raise the desert dust and make a lot of noise to show the enemies that now the Muslims were in big numbers and new soldiers had joined them. At sunrise, the opposing sides re-entered the battle. The archers of Muslims were ready to launch arrows to halt their advance. When the Romans came in the battle, they saw new forces on the front lines, assuming that the Muslims had new reinforcement. Khalid successfully set the fear in the enemies with his strategy, and the Muslims seized the momentum and inflicted acute casualties to the Romans. Despite the Muslims incurring a less than 1% casualty rate, Khalid strategically and slowly drew back the army. The Romans felt that they were being led deeper into the desert, which could prove it to be a disaster for them. So the Romans resisted and the Muslim's army started marching back home, unchallenged. Khalid with his army learned the tactics of the Romans, which would be valuable for the future expeditions. Back in Medina, as the Battle of Mota was unfolding, the Prophet ﷺ told the Muslims in real time what was transpiring hundreds of miles away. This was even before the advent of modern technology like the internet, phones, radio or TV etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam all the details the primary benefit of the battle of mota is that it opened the northern lands 95% of the battles of the sira occurred in the southern side the battle of mota was the largest battle in the north the romans and the christian arabs were not defeated but the reach of the ummah had spread there's no denying that the battle of mota had a huge impact. If only 3,000 could do so much damage and still escape, what would be done when the real general and the commander, the Prophet wasallam, himself turned up? We conclude today's session here. Inshallah, we will meet next time with a new episode. Jazakallahu khair. Please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel, Zil Nurain. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.